Welcome to Termite Machine Works. My name is Keith. Okay. Slip our pipe in. And uh, like I said, I'm just going to... Oh, it's like the width of my, uh, my palm there. About four inches. So I'm going to let it hang out. Alright, and we pop in uh, our holder. I've locked this nut down here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, Aluma tap here because I'm going to be flooding this. And uh, I always, a couple, uh, couple good squirts of oil on the waves. You know, I mean, you're rolling this thing back and forth by hand, okay? You want, you know, you want to, you want to feel your carriage. Everything is in neutral, no threads. All right, let's get a good tap at speed. 130 RPMs. We had uh, really forgotten about how far we went in here, but we're gonna uh, we're gonna call that the depth. Put it in reverse. Now, as you're coming back, you know you you got your hand on the uh, the wheel here, pulling back. Uh, and, you know you're keeping up speed, but when it gets to the end there, you got to get it out of the way. You don't want to be uh, rolling the thread over or so. All right, now if we if we did this right. It should screw in and seat all the way to the end. If not, then we got to go deeper. But I think I got it in there. Yep. All right. There's number one. Should be able to start cranking them now. So the next process is polishing, and we got to assemble the three-piece uh, units for polishing them. And uh, that one, it keeps the uh, the grit and all of that, all the threaded areas, if we fully assemble them. And uh, we put a little hole through these joints uh, so that we can tighten up one side or the other side, um, or undo them uh, for you know after use once you got the the day's use out of your stick and and you're ready to put it away sometimes the hole going through there which is a quarter inch hole uh, the average uh, Phillips screwdriver can slip into there that's in your toolbox and uh, you know kind of just had it so that all around you could you could uh, find something uh, to disassemble these it's kind of like a little aid or hand uh, and I have a straight quarter inch punch and it works real well. I like it. And uh, this is the tail shaft. But our six footers are the only ones that uh, the three piece and the solid six foot sticks are the only ones that we do uh, polish. Right. And we stick them right in just like that. We run them on the bell center. We got the uh, ways covered, uh, just so that, I mean, there's oil on them all the time. This is going to put out a white froth. It's oxidized aluminum that, uh, and bronze because we go over the head as well. And, uh, and then we just, we just polish them by hand. And, uh, and always make sure your center's up in there so you don't whip one out. New paper is pretty grass. Yes. 
nice and broke in. thing we're doing is we're going ahead and we're cutting all of our stainless steel shanks that go into the head itself uh, and these these go into the head uh, the depth and lock into the head and the other end is a square bunt uh, end that goes into a square board dart and uh, and that's the, the most popular um, rig going nowadays Now these will uh, go in on the Wilton and I'll lay them down and I precisionally sand the end square and then break the edge of the corner of uh, all the rods here. But we're going to cut the other two full lengths here. Alright, when you're using a Wilton or a sander or a belt sander, you want to make sure that you're not going to be sticking something like right in there. It's going to dig in there. You don't want to be sticking here and put a sharp edge up into the paper. Um, you know that, that's gonna that's those are things that will damage the paper. Um, now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna hold it down and roll it sideways, and that's gonna kind of do a a blanchard grind on the end across that paper right there. Then I'm gonna hold it up just freehand lightly, letting the paper roll the burr off the end. If you're gonna, the same way I do a, a thread, if you're going to cut off a, a thread and you want that burr to roll off the end of the thread, then your nuts will always start uh, easy. Right, so basically, just rolling it sideways, a nice flat grind right on the end. One turn lightly around like that, just break that corner. That simple. Okay, the final assembly on the right stick is putting together a pair clip. And of course, the first one I grab out of the bag is a fatty. Alright, the pair clip is attached to the, the top section there that you throw from. And it's where your, your lead or your dart line and everything else fares out through. Also, this uh, is your uh, safety so that after you stick the fish and the pole becomes limbo and, and it'll hang and slide up and down on your line and then as you're pulling your fish in you can retrieve your pole and then unsnap it and have it out of the way. Um, so anyway we attach this. Now we attach this with uh, a pair of pop rivets and uh, there's been controversies over uh, the the years uh, and I think it basically because somebody just basically lost their sticks and uh, they want to blame it on something so they think uh, a pop rivet is a weak point well the actual fact is is that that stainless steel pop rivet has 600 pounds of shear strength the pair clip that you're mounting on there has only got 200 pounds of pull strength so the weak point is not a pop rivet okay the weak point is the 200 pound unit and just hopefully that you don't have uh, you know an excess of force now sometimes you don't get a good shot on your fish 
and your fish gets wild or rolling or whatever and I mean I've seen rods go all the way through a fish and the fish do a roll and you know things come back looking like a pencil um, but anyway so what I do is on the on the right stick here this um, I have a set distance here that I mount the uh, pair clip at and it's just an even four inches down from the end here uh, no no biggie or any magic now the thing is that the 600 pounds of pull strength on, or shear strength on that pop rivet is if you're using the right rivet for the right thickness of material and the right hole size now, those are all important factors okay and they are all factored in on the right stick now after after we get the first one in there we get a good little straightness here and uh, we drill our second one that way we're keeping the holes nice and tight and uh, there's no room for, you know, you can't sit there and pre-drill these holes. they, they got to be custom drilled to suit. Alright. Now that's a stainless steel rope guide held on with two 600 pounds of sheer strength pop rivets, okay? That's not going anywhere. Alright. So we get that, and now we got the, a crutch, uh, the cap that goes on the end here. Okay, I thought I'd just bring you in here for a little closer uh, look at the pair clip and, and uh, there I will uh, include a photograph of, of these items as well. Now this is a standard crutch tip, just like on your crutches uh, you get from the hospital and it happens to be exactly what is needed for a nice cap on the end of the right stick. And that's what I put on each one. I use white versus black because I don't want black skin marks on your gel coat deck. Okay, now putting the shank into the end here, the first thing I do is I put just a little bit of super lube on the end of it here. Um, just because some people never take this thing out and uh, and they'll, they'll, it gets a little corroded in there. And um, it, because if they're not taking it out, they're also not washing or maintenancing their stick at all. And uh, it's just sooner or later it's going to get frozen in there and oh you know, just a little lube doesn't doesn't hurt and a little bit on the set screw threads now I I've, I've had a couple of requests or or comments that there should be a flat on this uh, shank here where the set screw goes in uh, but the the clearance built in on the bore of my holder here matches the same clearance that I machined the flat bottom bore in the darts and it's to release easy okay and and you're gonna you're gonna have a little bit of a mushroom in on the stainless steel but it'll still come out fine when you loosen it up all right and uh, you know hey it, it does happen these shanks do get bent and the stainless ones are easy to pull out and put in a vise and pull back and and you can get them straight and keep on trucking with them uh, some of your aluminum ones will snap off uh, and your steel will definitely rust and, and stain your deck and your gel coat get her done with the right stick